back to Larlo video. If you're new here, I'm Lauren and I do movie reviews sometimes. If you guys haven't seen my previous movies and makeup video, I'm going to leave it in the cards above. But essentially, this video is going to be me putting on makeup while I am talking about my thoughts about a movie. And I thought since October is my favorite month and I love watching horror movies, I'm going to be doing a bunch of horror and Halloween related videos and I'm really excited, so keep watching. I also want to say my apologies for the hat if it's creating any weird shadows because my hair is g g g g g greasy. <laughs> So off camera, I already did my eyebrows as well as primed my eyelids just so it could save us a little bit of time. For today's look, I think I'm going to be going with a red eyeshadow look to symbolize blood. And I'm going to be testing out the Zulu palette by Juvia's Place. I was super excited when my Ulta got this and I'm just really digging these colors. This red is kind of speaking to me. It's like closing. I'm just really digging this color. So the first movie that I am going to be reviewing for 13 Days of Halloween is The Houses October Built. This is a found footage style horror film and it was released in 2014 and directed by Bobby Rowe. It seems like a smaller production because the actor that played Jeff as well as the actor that played Zach, they also wrote the movie with Bobby Rowe. Essentially, the plot of this movie is that five friends, Brandy, Zach, Mike, Bobby, and Jeff, they all go out on a road trip across the country. But what makes this a little bit different is that they're going across the country to check out all the different haunted attractions across the country. <laughs> I definitely can get down with this concept just because I could see myself doing that with my friends too. Like, just checking out all these haunted attractions and going on a little road trip. And since this is a horror movie, it also kind of brings in my mind like something that I've always wondered about haunted attractions like that. Like what if there is something truly sinister going on behind the scenes? Generally when I've seen haunted attractions, like they're pretty hokey and they're filled with like fake blood and stuff, but you know, it, it kind of begs the question like what's real and what's not. Y you don't know because maybe it could just be really high quality gore makeup or you know something else. It, it's, it's spooky. Over the years found footage horror films have definitely gained some popularity. I've seen it in VHS and The Visit and Blair Witch Project. Like they date, they, they basically like broke ground on that. Can you guys tell that my nose is stubby? <laughs> the only thing is is that I can't handle found footage films for very long. Usually they kind of make my eyes hurt just because it's like so shaky that I ah, I just can't handle it. It's like disorienting for me. So when I did see that this was in the genre of found footage, I was a little bit wary of it just because, you know, I don't want to deal with that. But I will say that this movie had like a tasteful shake. I, I think in the element of the shaky cam, they did this pretty well. Like it was enough to convey realism, but not enough to give me like motion sickness. <laughs> I also found that by them keeping it a lower quality that they were filming on, it definitely made it a lot more realistic as well as creepy. So honestly, I think one of the best scares for me in the movie was while they're at a bonfire, because it is such a low quality of film that they're using as well as the darkness, like they're not, you can tell that they're not using a crazy amount of studio lights. It created this really dark graininess behind the bonfire. So you couldn't really see past the characters and I don't want to spoil it, but there is a scare and they don't include like a jump scare noise. They nailed it with that one because I was just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> that is terrifying. Um, I don't know. I just found that moment to be like really effective and also the moments that followed were actually like pretty unsettling. So I just, I found that the camera quality and it being found footage, it really did they, they, they did that masterfully. Like, it just was perfect. 
So the movie's concept itself definitely allows for a good amount of scares, but they also sweeten the pot a little bit by hinting at this secret organization called Blue Skeleton that is a haunted attraction that changes location every single year. And it's like super elite, super secretive, and it's supposed to be like the most extreme haunt. Additionally, they have these characters that were at one of the first few haunts, and they notice that they keep seeing these same characters at haunts that are like a hundred miles apart from each other. So it almost seems like these actors are following them. They also have at each of the haunts where they're filming the actors and they're giving like very candid interviews and I feel like I've read somewhere that they were actual interviews that they had at these haunted locations. I found it incredibly interesting also that one of the actors mentioned this event where a teenage actor actually was hung in one of the haunted attractions and it malfunctioned and he like actually died and was hanging there for a while until somebody noticed. And I always kind of thought that that was like a, an urban legend or something like that and I went on Snopes after watching the movie and it's real <laughs> and it's actually happened a few times where I think like the first documented case was in 1990 and it was documented in the Chicago Tribune where there was a malfunction at the gallows where the noose actually hung one of the performers and 40 people passed by and nobody knew that they were actually seeing a real dead body. I just find that so fascinating because sometimes art imitates life and life imitates art and it's just like, ah, that's so freaking terrifying. The fact that you really don't know if somebody is actually in distress and uh, 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 I don't like that. I don't like it. Also, just FYI, I'm using the shade Jax from the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette and I'm putting that on my outer edge. So first off, let's just address the shining glory of the movie and that is the actors. They nailed it. So I think it definitely helps that the actors seem to be friends in real life because the dialogue was just so natural and that really helped them out in this movie, making it very relatable and not too long ago, I actually watched a video by Nerdwriter. I'm gonna link it in the description below. It's an excellent video. But he explains how effective dialogue is created in movies. And one of like the big points is talking over each other. So many times when we're having a conversation with somebody that we're really comfortable with, we're, we're kind of anticipating what that person is going to say and we also just sort of get so excited that we're sort of stream of thought and like blurting out things and that happens a lot in the houses october built where they're just kind of like talking over each other having conversations that are like diverting and crossing between like you know two people to four people it's just it's so relaxed and natural and i think they did that so excellently it also makes me so happy whenever I discover movies were kind of made by like a close-knit group because it inspires me. Like, honestly, I would love to do something like that. Just make sort of an independent horror movie with a couple of friends and who knows, you know, it could kick off or we could just sort of have fun, do some creepy stuff. So I'm just gonna go ham on this like red color to make this a lot more red toned because it's just pink at this point. You'd think for how I do makeup every single day that I might get better at blending, but <laughs> you thought wrong. So I'm stuck between using this shimmer shade from the Zulu palette or using this shimmer shade from the Lorac Unzip Gold palette. I kinda wanna do this one. Oh, and I'm using the shade Unlimited from the Lorac Unzip Gold Palette. BT dubs. I suppose that I should go on to my criticisms. 
So I personally hate jump scares. I hate them with a passion. And if you don't know what those are, it's basically in a movie when the music gets really quiet, or at least like all the background noise gets really quiet in a movie, and then all of a sudden there's this loud bang along with like something jumping out in the movie. And instead of actually like frightening you, it's playing off of like you getting startled. And I kind of feel like it's a cop out a lot of times. And there's this, uh, it's a pet peeve of mine. And M. Night Shyamalan does it, he's done it in a couple of his movies and it's like the same sound too. It's almost like this pterodactyl noise and the thing that bothers me about it is that it's supposedly like coming from a human character and it's like no that is not possible that noise would not come from a human being and it's around like I think 21 minutes into the movie where Bobby or no where yeah where Bobby is like sneaking up on Mikey out in the woods because he like woke up in the middle of the night and he makes that pterodactyl noise and I'm just like why? Why did you have to put that in? Like I, I, mm, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. Alright so I was attempting to put on the eyeliner as I was speaking and it kept getting jacked up so I am gonna go off camera, put on my eyeliner and then come back. Alright and we're back. So What's kind of disappointing is that I felt as though the movie had a really beautiful slow build throughout the first two acts. Like I really, I, I felt like it was building up, so, up to something that was going to surprise me. Unfortunately, it kind of felt as though in the last act everything kind of fell apart but not in a good way. Like it, it didn't seem like it was intentional. I found it to be very... I feel so bad. Um, I kind of found it to be predictable and I feel as though these characters seem to be very level-headed. I mean, yeah, they seem to be very level-headed throughout most of the movie and then out of nowhere it's just kind of like, why are you making that decision? That is not what a logical human being would make. Like, what? What? <laughs> Can you guys tell that I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to buffing foundation into my face? Eh, eh, eh. What I have been doing is buffing it into the skin and then tapping it on with a dry beauty sponge to like smooth it out. It's hmm, kind of working. I just gotta get it while it's like still wet, like not too dry or else it starts just like picking up on itself. So some quick details, I'm going in with the Laura Geller Baked Highlighter Duo in the shade French Vanilla slash Portofino. I'm going to go in with the side French Vanilla, see if that gives a little bit more. Oh yeah. There we go. I'm also going to be going in with the Morphe 8C Blush Palette and I think I'm going to use the shade Sexy. And I'm just going to be putting that on the apples of my cheeks and the tip of my nose. Yeah, overall, I don't know, this movie, I had such high hopes for it because I love the concept, I loved the actors, and I love that it's a small project, and I really love the cinematography of it. The fact that everything was so grainy and so dark, it really adds to that suspenseful feeling. But it just kind of feels like they pooped the bed towards like the end of it, like they didn't know how to finish the movie. And certain things, certain details like were really kind of stressed upon like, oh, the main one of the main characters, Brandy, is claustrophobic. I wonder if that's going to be brought back in any way. And it just kind of became predictable. And I really thought that they were going to just like knock me off my seat and really blow me away with like some crazy suspenseful ending. And I don't know, it just kind of was like, oh, all right. Well, I guess that's the end of the movie. And I thought that the blue skeleton reveal would be having a little bit more to it. Um, it seemed to be 
kind of uneventful, uninspiring, and I do appreciate the fact that there isn't really any gore at all in the movie, because um, sometimes I just kind of need a break from all that, but it also just like wasn't that terrifying at the end of it, and I kind of feel like at the end of a horror movie, that's when you should be the most scared, you know? So I guess if I get down to rating this movie, I would probably rate it like three brushes out of five for this movie. Just because I feel like the bare bones were there, like they had such a, an original concept and very fun and believable characters that you could relate to a lot. But they just didn't know how to end the movie, I think. And I do have high hopes because there is a sequel, The House is October Built 2. And I think that maybe there's a possibility that they could flesh it out much better and maybe get more perspective on the secret society, Blue Skeleton, and maybe, I don't know, just delve into more of that world because I think that things just needed to be fleshed out a little bit better and this movie would have been A1. Alright guys, so that is it for this review and makeup look. Overall, I think that The Houses October Built is a very pleasant watch. I don't think it's necessarily a waste of time whatsoever, but I do think that towards the last act you will kind of be disappointed, so if you do want to watch, I definitely think it's worth checking out, but if you don't, really find the whole concept interesting, I think you could pass on this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this first video in this October series, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!